So chapter eight is all about quadratic equations, inequalities, and functions. So in section um, 8.1, what we're gonna talk about is the square root property and completing the square. So previously in chapter five, we had learned how to factor trinomial equations in this form, right? This is an example of a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and this is the standard form of a quadratic equation. We had used um, the zero factor property to solve equations of this form. So if I have two numbers and their product is zero, then either one or the others has to be zero. And the way we learned to factor last chapter was we want to find the factors of a, c that add up to b. That's still what we're doing right now, but um, we're going to learn two new methods as this chapter goes on. So we start out with our A, B, C's. And I say, okay, what are some factors of A, C that add up to B? So negative 20, that's going to factor into a 4 times a negative 5, and 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. So I know that this is going to factor to um, X squared plus 4x minus 5x plus minus 20 equals 0. And now I can factor by grouping. The greatest common factor of x squared and 4x is x. The greatest common factor of negative 5x and negative 20 is negative 5. So now I have both these looking the same, which means I did my problem correctly. I collect my like terms. I've got x minus 5 times x plus 4 equals 0. And now I use the zero factor property to set each of these factors equal to 0. And I find my solutions are x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 5. And I could write them um, in together as my solution set like that. I also want us to talk about the square root property. The square root property is a way for us to solve um, quadratics that are perfect squares. So if I have x squared equals k, then we have x equals the square root of k or x equals negative square root of k. And why is that the case? Well, let's say x equals nine and I take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus three. Why is that? Well, because three squared is nine and negative 3 squared is 9. So let's take a look at our example 1. If I have x squared equals 5 and I take the square root of both sides, I get that x equals plus or minus square root of 5. So my solution set is the negative square root of 5 and the positive square root of 5. And I want you to leave this in radical form. Uh, don't give me an irrational number. Um, because you will probably round it, right? Because rational numbers go on forever. And if you round it, then you aren't being precise. Next, I've got x minus 5 squared equals 36. If I take the square root of both sides, that gives me x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 36, which is 6. So I have x minus 5 equals 6, and x minus 5 equals negative 6. And I solve both of these accordingly. So I get x equals 11 and x equals negative 1 is my solution set. Now let's switch colors because I'm doing a lot of problems on this one space. So here was problem 1, here was 2. I'm going to go do 3 over here. If I have 2x minus 3 squared equals 18, I take the square root of both sides. I get 2x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 18, which is 3 square root of 2 if you simplify it. Now I take each of these and set it equal to 3 square root of 2, and 2x minus 3 equals negative 3 square root of 2. I add 3 to both sides. 2x equals negative 3 square root of 2 plus 3. I divide both sides by 2. I do the same thing over here, but there's never enough room, right? So I have 2x equals 3 square root of 2, 3 plus that, because we like to have the whole part first. Divide both sides by 2, so I find 
up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. I find that x equals 3 plus 3 squared to 2 divided by 2 and x equals uh, 3 minus 3 squared to 2 over 2 because we like to have the radical part um, after our rational part. Now how do I factor this? This is a when we were working in chapter 5, I said x squared plus 2x equals negative 7. So we could try and factor it by finding the factors of AC that add up to B, right? A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 7. Okay, so what are some factors of negative 7 that add up to 2? Well, the problem is there aren't any. Negative 7 can factor into a 1 at times a negative 7, or it can factor into a negative 1 times 7. That's it. And we called this equation prime, meaning we couldn't factor it any further. Well, now we're going to learn our first method of how to factor what we would have previously considered prime uh, quadratic equations, and that's completing the square.